Hi, everybody. This is Linda Halloran. I'm with Town and Country Federal Credit Union and want to welcome all of you that are uh, with us tonight for this session with Kate Caden talking about frugal living. If you're a Town and Country member, um, this might be the first time that you have a chance to meet Kate. And I know many of you on the call are already part of the Kate squad, so we're uh, really happy to meet you. Town & Country is a credit union in Southern Maine, and I know a lot of you are kind of located all over the rest of the country. So we have started working with Kate, who is a Mainer, and we loved how she thinks about frugal living and shares so many ideas with people to help, help people dealing with inflation. But right now, living frugally, more frugally, and trying to eke out some extra money is important because we're all getting squeezed at the grocery store and gas pump, but frugal living or thinking more frugally is a, is a whole way of thinking that can help you stretch your budget, save more and reach your goals. And so we've teamed up with Kate who does a Frugal Friday segment with us and shares lots of tips and things. So we've invited her tonight to share with us her top 30 tips and ideas on frugal living. So I'm gonna let Kate tell you more about herself and wanna say welcome and we're glad you're all here. Thank you so much, Linda. Yeah. Hey everyone. Oh, I can see the K squad in here. For everyone that is new here, first of all, welcome to the family. We are so glad you're here. If you're coming from town and country and you are here for the first time, we are all thrilled. And I can see in the comments right now, I can see all of our K-Squad. The K-Squad is everyone that is a follower of this channel. And we come here literally every week, every single Friday. We call it Frugal Friday. And it is our Friday ritual where we come and have a conversation with each other. We talk about frugal living tips, budgeting, and saving money. Oh, thanks. I can see everyone commenting right now. Some people are saying where they're from. I love that. If you want to go in the comments right now and just say where you're from, I would love to see that. Um, I see Utah. I see Canada. I'm so glad you're here. So what we're going to do tonight, if you have never been here before, I am offering ideas. And as the K-Squad knows, I am offering, oh, can you guys hear me? Okay. I am offering, oh, well, we've got a delay. Oh, oh, can you guys hear me fine now? Oh, well, we've got a delay. Oh. oh, you guys all set? There's no delay anymore. Sorry about that. Okay. I think we're okay. Oh, okay. So I see from Maine, of course, my Mainers are here. I see Massachusetts, Pittsburgh, South Portland. Guys, is the delay still going on? Or are we good? Is everything, can everybody hear me normally? Hi, Marcy. Hello, Helen. Can you guys all hear me fine now? Is the delay gone? No delay now. Perfect. Okay. All right, so what I'd like you guys to do is first of all, get comfortable. Have a drink of your choice if you want. Have a pen and paper ready if you wanna write some notes down. What I'm offering is suggestions. It's ways to save money. Right now we all know inflation's happening. We know every time we go to the gas pump, it's a little more stressful. Every time we go to the grocery store, it's a little bit more stressful because the prices have risen. But I'm here not to add to any fear or anything scary. We're here to offer some ideas and thoughts. So what's going to happen is as we go through these, some of you are going to be like, yes, yes, I want to do that. I want to try that. Some of them you are going to be like, I don't know. Maybe I could try that. I'll think about that. And some are going to be like, no, uh-uh, I'm not doing that. And that's fine. Take what works for you, what resonates for you, and leave the rest behind, okay? 
Again, thank you, Town & Country, for having me. I am thrilled, so let's get started. The first thing is turning off the lights every time you leave a room. Now, guys, we're kind of like, say we're working out. And nobody wants to work out right now at 6 o'clock, but uh, it's like we're walking. We're walking in place. We're going to kind of start kind of start simple and then add on, right? Um, so turning off the lights every time you leave a room is such a good habit. <laughs> Rosie Bunny, I see you. That's conserving energy. It is so second nature for me every time I leave a room to shut the lights off, unless I'm really going to be going right back in. But I'm actually kind of known for as the night progresses, like say we're in the living room and the lights are on. When we're done in the living room, we kind of shut that area down. Now, you know, we make lunches for tomorrow, shut the kitchen down. Now we're moving into the bedrooms. It's just a really easy but simple habit that will help with electricity. Just don't leave it on. I even do it at work. Work doesn't encourage me to do that, but I just do. It's just it's just second nature, right? Okay. So along those same lines of power is to unplug appliances that you aren't using. We're moving on to number two. So phantom energy is real because I, I had a couple people kind of debate me on this. And I'm just going to say, so what is phantom electricity? It's power that's consumed by all those electronic appliances and devices you have in your home when you're either in standby mode or it's turned off, but it's still plugged in. So why is this a problem? Well, um, it says that per uh, home efficiency guide, phantom energy, also known as vampire energy, is a factual and research validated cause of increased electrical bills. Recent studies have estimated that 10 to 33 percent of an average household's energy, Bills are traceable to phantom energy. 10 to 33%. Now, make sure you don't go crazy. You're not going to unplug your refrigerator. You're not going to unplug the things you're using. But, you know, when you're done with the toaster, um, oh, I see Susan says, I unplug stuff that doesn't get used often. Yeah, so if it's... If it's not something you're using often, absolutely unplug it. But even the things that you might use, like I keep my microwave plugged in. I keep my refrigerator plugged in. But if you're going to use a device and then you just leave like the power in the wall, I love to unplug everything. And by the way, this isn't going to be like saving you millions. It's just another good habit to get into so that you're not wasting money on phantom electricity. You know what I mean? You're not even using it. Um. Okay, so moving on. And guys, I'm going to be like looking in the comments and I'll be responding, but I also want to make sure I keep moving and we might have more discussions. There's some that I want to take a little bit more time on and there's some that I can plow through. All right, save change. You might think this is old school, but let me know in the comments, do you still do this? Do you have a change jar? I do. <laughs> and I love it. And I love cashing in the change later on um, after, after you saved for a while. What's more exciting than going in? Oh, yes. Okay. Christina says, I always save change. Yes. A jar, a piggy bank, any kind of container. Maddie says, yes, saving for college for daughter. Hey, um, so I am recognizing, of course, a lot of the K-Squad, but I'm also seeing some new names. If you're new here tonight, can you let me know in the comments, new here or from town and country, just let us know so that we can welcome you properly so we can see you in the comments. Who's new tonight? And Everyone that has been with me for the last three years or any part of that and are here tonight, thank you for the support. I'm so glad you're here. Okay. I see. Yes. Oh, mindful gratitudes like change bucket. Thank you very much. 
That is awesome. And I know there was like a change shortage for a little bit. And, um, ooh, hold on. Ruminator. Hello, new from town and country. Welcome. I'm so glad you're here. Connie. Yes. Oh, for snacks, for trips. I love that. Jenny, welcome. We're so glad you're here. I know this lady. Hello. You're one of my favorite people in the world. <laughs> Hi, Terry. Oh, look at all of you. Oh, thank you so much. Okay. Oh, Kathy Counts, new from Maine, town and country. Welcome. Oh, I'm so glad you're here. Okay. Moving on to recycling. Now, this is one that uh, if you guys watch my day in the life video, I love to recycle our cans and bottles. Um, we try to do that after we have some like building up of them. And I know not every state lets you return them, but if you live in these 10 states, they do. So the states that let you return your bottles after you've bought them um, and get five cents back in most cases for them are California, Connecticut, Hawaii, Iowa, Massachusetts. I saw some of you from Massachusetts, Maine, my home state, Michigan, New York, Oregon, and Vermont. So if you live in any of those states, you can return your bottles and get money back. And I love to do that. Oh, Karina. Hello. So glad you're here. Oh my goodness, Robin. Hello. I'm so happy you all are here. I'm so thrilled. Okay. Moving on to number five. Now this one I have to spend a minute on because it's very important. So I didn't really get into talking about myself at the beginning here, but um, I'm a single parent. And when I became a single parent, it's a little scary. If you're a single parent, you know, if you are not a single parent, but you're even coupled up, sometimes it's like, okay, how am I going to afford life? How am I going to afford, you know, college for the kids? What, you know, in just day to day right now, right? The emergency fund, and I have several videos on this, is crucial. Um, I learned about emergency funds originally from Dave Ramsey. And while, as time's gone on, there's things that I, I'm not like crazy about with Dave Ramsey, but there's, his baby steps are very, very good. And so if you are interested in not being so stressed financially, trying to save up for three to six months expenses of an, of a, like an account that you're not going to touch in case of an emergency. And I mean, a true emergency, not Christmas, not a wedding. I'm talking emergency. You lose your job. Um, there is an accident, um, that kind of thing. Three to set, three to six months expenses. And if you're a homeowner, Maybe not even if you're just a homeowner, but like uh, I would recommend closer to six would be better, right? <gasps> Hello, Heather. Oh my gosh. I am so excited you all are here. This is so great. Could you let me know in the comments, have you started an emergency fund? Have you started? Are you on track? Have you started putting... Uh, some money aside for when things happen, you know? Um, oh, Debbie's on baby step two. Oh, look at this lovely, lovely person. Alita, good evening. Hi, Kathy counts. Oh, what did Kathy say? I save up my bottles and donate them while I'm, yes, I love it. Oh, okay. Oh, all right. So mayor says I have an emergency fund. Val fully funded six months. Congrats, Val. Katie, 12K in emergency fund. Way to go. Kathy counts. Yes, I have plenty aside for emergency fund. Wonderful. That I really feel is such a, a way to relieve stress. And I know it takes a while to get there, but if you are focused and all these other tips will help you get there. And 
all the videos on my channel. That's what we talk about every week. If you're enjoying this so far, guys, hit that thumbs up and let me know that you're here and you are enjoying this conversation. And just don't forget, if you want to talk about this kind of stuff, hit the subscribe button with us so you can join us every week. This is this is what our discussions are, right, K-Squad? Okay, so Annalise says, no, need to start, but it's hard when you're paycheck to paycheck. Yes, it is. It is hard when it's paycheck to paycheck. And actually, if you type in later on, Kate Caden, paycheck to paycheck, I have a couple videos that might be helpful for you. Um, again, all along these lines, Karen, emergency fund is fully funded. Lisa, using our 12-month emergency fund plan due to a gap in income. See, and now it's there. You've got it. Um, Heather says, no emergency fund yet needs to work on it. Yeah, but you, now it's like you're engaged in this conversation. Hopefully, you guys, this conversation is like the spark of something new. Like, oh, you know what? Things are going on. I don't have to panic. But if I do little steps here and there, I can build my emergency fund and um, not stress so much. Oh, look at all you guys. Oh, wonderful. Oh, Janice, you just became a member. Thank you so much. Wonderful. All right. Number six. This is another cornerstone of my entire channel is living below your means. And I know that's easier said than done. Please know that I know that. But if you always, and I've said this a million times, if you never spend more than you make, you'll never go in debt. It's just, it's math. You know what I mean? If you never spend more than you make. But the problem is we often don't know. Now, it sounds strange. like, Or maybe you're like, as you're listening, you're like, yeah, me neither. You might not know how much you make or you might not know how much you actually take home. And then you certainly might not know every dollar that's leaving your house right now. Every time you stop at the gas station and get a drink, every time you order takeout, every time you go to the grocery store for the second time this week because you forgot this and you get seven other things. Can anyone relate? <laughs> I've done it. Hello. Yes. Um, so living below your means We'll do it every time. If you never, I'm just gonna say it one more time. If you never spend more than you make, you won't be in debt, right? We we love this topic on the channel. If you're if you're wanting to know more about that later on, type in Kate Caden, live below your means. I've got tons of content. That's one of my favorite things to talk about. Okay. Stay home, right? <laughs> uh, I was doing this before it was mandatory. Okay. Like I, I am a homebody first of all, but I also know the value in, especially after I purchased my house, like I wanted to utilize it. I wanted to be here, but if you can, I'm going to add something to that. If you can make your home, your sanctuary, you'll want to be home more. So if you guys were thinking about your home and you're like more likely to go out just leave me in the comments for a second. What would encourage you to stay home more besides just maybe your personality? Like what could you do to your home on a budget that is enjoyable? I will say one thing, for example, keeping it tidy, right? Like if your house is a disaster, you're like, get me out of here. <laughs> maybe it's lighting candles that you have and that wonderful smell when you walk in the house. Maybe it's cooking a meal at home. And when you walk in the door, you smell those smells and you're like, oh, this feels like home. My mom and dad, I always say this to them, but like when I walk into their house, like I don't even want to leave. Like I love being in my parents' home. It feels like my home and they know I make myself at home. But me and my son, it's like an extension of our house. Like I just, I love being there. But now that I have my own home, for those of you that are new, I just purchased a home in the middle of a global pandemic in 2020. And by the way, if that's something you're interested in knowing more about, I have a playlist called Buying Your First Home. 
And that has tons of information in there that might be helpful for you if you're buying your first home. Oh, I love just reading all your comments. Um, oh, I love that. Robin says, cooking contest with your partner, make a fun game of it. I love that. Sandra from Scotland says, clean bedding in an early night. Sandra, you're speaking my language. Um, Karen says, getting to a state of cozy minimalism, clutter-free, my cats and candles keep me at home and happy. Oh, geez, you guys, can I come over? Because this all seems like things that I want to do. Shannon, congratulations, closing on your home tomorrow. Ah, that is so exciting. Congratulations, that's a big deal. So staying home, not all the time. And I know there was a time where we 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 had to stay home, but now it's we've got some options, but sometimes making fun things at home. By the way, I have a video about if you have kids, frugal fun activities for the summer. I have a whole video, I think with 20 of them. Check that out in your spare time. Ooh, Jeffrey says cook out on the patio. Yeah. Hope from under the median, by the way, if you're not following Hope and Larry, what have you been doing? <laughs> They're amazing. Friday night picnics at the park instead of going out to eat. I love that. And this is Larry. Hope and I stay home and cuddle up to a good movie and coffee. Literally sounds heavenly. I love it. So that's just an option, you know, and there's times to get out, but Staying home can definitely save you money, especially if you make it fun. And by the way, that's kind of what this whole channel is about. It's about having fun and not making budgeting, saving money uh, burdensome. We want to have fun here. And I think you can probably tell by the comments and by the vibe here, this isn't, this isn't, it's not burdensome. It's a pleasure. We really do enjoy it, right, K-Squad? We really do. And I know that sounds so crazy, but we do. All right, number eight, learn how to do things for free on YouTube. For example, if you want to learn how to budget, in the description of this video at the very bottom, it says watch next. And it is um, creating a budget for the first time, like how to create a budget. Uh, I'm going to talk about budgeting a little bit further. But on YouTube, you can learn lots of things. You could learn how to speak another language. I mean, the, it's really endless. Obviously, I'm on YouTube, but I love it so much. And there's so much you can learn, so much education. Number nine, cut your own hair. Did seven of you just click out? Come back, come back. The point of this more is do it yourself. My question to you is, now let me give you my cutting hair example. There was a time back when I was married and um, we had a very bad financial struggle. Long story short, let's just get to the point of we were struggling financially. And I had to, we, I had to really like figure out, like I was getting my hair dyed, I was getting my nails done which you clearly see are not a thing anymore. Uh, hair, yes, but not the nails. Um, but I was like, what are we going to do? So I actually watched a YouTube video and learned how to cut my hair. And for, I don't know, maybe a year or so, I cut my own hair. <laughs> so my question to you is, what is something, and this might have happened during the pandemic or it might have happened out of necessity, What's something, leave it in the comments, that you learned how to do it yourself that you're actually pretty proud of? Oh, so some of you cut your hair now. Marcy says, yeah, I cut my hair. Yes, or less haircuts, but still getting them. Doris says, I want to be able to cut my hair, but too nervous, even if I learn. I was so nervous. But then I thought, 
my hair was longer at the time. I thought worst case scenario, I can have somebody fix this if it's a complete disaster. I wasn't doing like Phoebe cutting Monica's hair. Do you guys remember that episode? <laughs> so it wasn't a complete nightmare. Um, pedicures. Doris does her own pedicures. That's definitely a way to save money. If you're doing manicures and pedicures, can you do it at home or can you do it at home once in a while? You know, less haircuts. Yes. I go about once or twice a year. Good for you. That's not bad. That's, you know, um, Amy learned oh, how to replace the detergent dispenser in my dishwasher. No repair man needed. Amy, did you learn that? How'd you learn that? Was that YouTube? That's amazing. Think of the money you're saving. Mm. Okay, so you so some of you are going to the salon less. I mean, think about when we couldn't go. <laughs> our family has been cutting our own for 10 years. Saves us money as a family of five. Elizabeth, that is amazing. That's a lot of savings. I wanted, I waited a year during COVID and I got a fun part in a video in which the director loved my frumpy hair. Kathy, that's so cool. Oh, I love that. Amy, you did learn it on YouTube. See? Yes. I love it. Um. Oh, thank you guys for clicking that like button. I appreciate it. My sister-in-law and mother-in-law are hairdressers. All right, you got it made in the shade, my friend. That is awesome. And Marcy says, makes basic repairs to the house. If you guys can learn those kind of things, I had a friend in Florida that came to visit me and he was so handy and I had, my air conditioner had gone out and I lived in Florida and it was awful. And he went on YouTube, figured out how to fix it and fixed my car for free. It was, it was awesome. Good vibes. Oh, you wash your own car. That's a great idea. Even though Caden loves going through the car wash. Does anybody else's kid love going through the car wash when they can? We don't do it that often. But when he does, he's like, this is so fun. <laughs> two boys and husband that need haircuts at least two weeks. We push that further now. So, yes, that's awesome. Okay. All right. Number 10. And this one. I feel like is the one that people hate, but I truly feel like is the reason I was able to, I know is the reason I was able to pay off my car. So I have no car payment right now. If you have a car payment, think about what you caught, what that costs per month. Let's say it's three or $400. What else would you love to put three or $400 toward per month? Because of budgeting, I was able to build up a six to 12 month emergency fund, which I don't think is necessarily um, necessary to go for 12. But after I, when I got my house, I was like, I would feel a lot more comfortable if I built this up a little bit more. Because when you are a homeowner, who knows what's going to happen? You know what I mean? Like, there's no, when you're renting, you're like, oh, hello, landlord. This is what happened. Can you please help me out? But when it's yours, it's your problem <laughs> and you got to figure it out. You know what I mean? Um, uh, Jeffrey said, I think every kid loves it. Yes. Going through that car wash is just so fun. So um, speaking of budgets, okay, so you know, um, Town & Country is my credit union, and they have resources that will help you create and manage a budget. So obviously, you know, I've got stuff on the channel that's going to help, but I'm also just going to, I'm going to put this, can you guys all see this in the comments? Because they have some really great information. You see that? Um, and even if you are not a member, which by the way, I mean, are any of you a member of a credit union? Because I think, especially town and country, they're so friendly, they're so welcoming, and I just I feel very confident in them. And I I, I feel I feel like that's really 
a real perk of being part of a credit union, especially them. They're just, they're so great. And they provide resources to help you improve your finances. Alexa says, yes, love credit unions. Uh, I just saw Sandra said, town and country, helping people. Yes! Town and country and evergreen. Laura says, I would never use anything but a credit union. Woohoo! Shout out to the credit unions. I love credit unions. Yes. Creating a budget is one of the cornerstones of my life. Like if I hadn't created a budget, I don't even know where I'd be. When I became a single parent, I was like, okay, I, I, where do I start? And now that's not just for single parents. This is right now, people go through life changes. You don't expect to get divorced. Suddenly you're getting divorced. You don't expect to get in a car accident. My poor friend, I don't know if some of you are, are from my area, but got in a car accident, broke both of her ankles. Nobody expects that to happen. And, you know, again, don't, I'm not saying live in fear of car accident, but I'm saying like things happen. And if you have that budget, you're definitely, definitely in a better position to manage when it hits the fan. You know, if you don't know what you're spending, you don't know what's coming in. It's a lot harder. Ooh, Town & Country gave me a second mortgage loan that totally squared me away and I paid it off in a few years. Perfect. That is awesome. Tony says, didn't expect to be a widow at 55. No. And so here Tony is like, okay, I've got to pivot. I've got to pivot. And we're gonna, you know, we're gonna figure this out. And that's what we do each week together, right guys? Hey Sloan. All right, I could talk about budgets forever, but I'm gonna keep going. Now, did people just click out again? Drink less alcohol and don't smoke or smoke a lot less. Um, the alcohol thing, this is like one of those things where if you're going to go out, you know how much the booze ends up costing. It it really does. Like if you're going out to a bar, you're going out to a restaurant, it can really rack up. Um, and then there's like, you could get a $5 bottle of wine from Target. <laughs> and I'm not saying like, that's what you always have to do, but there are options, right? There are options. I'm not saying never. I mean, if you're under 21 never drink but if you're if you're if you're of age and you know I'm not saying never drink but I am saying it's pricey right and cigarettes you know I've never been a cigarette smoker I have asthma like I so I it's never been on the on the table or an option for me but cigarettes I don't even I mean when back in the day, I used to work in a store in Old Orchard Beach, actually, you guys, whoever just said they were from Old Orchard, was that, was that, um, Kathy? Um, I used to work at a store in Old Orchard and they used to sell cigarettes. And back then, this was back when I was a lot younger, it was expensive then. And now what does it cost? I don't even know. Does anybody know? Does anybody even have an estimate of what a pack of cigarettes cost right now? It just doesn't seem, and I know, I know it's an addiction, like I know, but you know, there's options with that too. Yes, Kathy, OOB. Oh, $10, Susan? That's just blowing my mind, right? ten dollars for a pack of cigarettes again i'm not your mama not your mama i won't tell you but but wow right i don't smoke but i have a friend who is frustrated with her husband who does and i asked her how much they cost to seven to eight a pack i can't even fathom it's something to consider if this is something you're doing frequently could you do a little less and eventually phase out you know 
I quit smoking. Way to go, Claire. Yes, Sandra, town and country mug. Okay. All right. So, drinking more water. Drinking more water, you guys. And I know that's like, yeah, Kate, we know we're supposed to drink it. But do you? <laughs> Are you guys drinking enough water and be beyond the health benefits? And I'm, that's like a big one. But like, you know, it, it's it's water. Especially here in Maine, we can drink straight out of the tap. Now, I when I used to live in Florida, oh, no, 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 no. Uh, can you guys drink your tap water where you are? I think main water is great, but in Florida, no, 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 no. I did not enjoy that, but, oh, oh, Robin, guys, Robin, this is Robin that was on my show that we, that we talked about. So if you type in Kate, Kate, Kaden and Robin, you will see a wonderful interview we did together because she is amazing. She is a resiliency coach and she is just love this girl. We've also been friends for a very long time. Wow. So that's just, yeah. Um, in England, tap water is good. We can drink the tap. Tap water always. Water is my beverage of choice. Okay. Ireland. Hi, Sandy. I cut my husband's hair, his dad's hair, and my bangs. Way to go, Anne. You can drink tap water. Oh, wow. The wolf says, I'm against smoking. And I know you, you're one of Rosie's friends, right? So I good. I hope you hope you stick with that. Okay, drink some water. I won't spend a lot of time. You guys know. All right. Practicing zero waste for food. This is a time where zero waste is an amazing concept if we can do it. I've used this example eight gazillion, quadrillion times. Back in the day, I used to want to be a vegetable eater. I really am now, but back in the day, I was not. And I would buy produce like it was my job, just buying more vegetables. And then it would rot in my fridge because. I did not like vegetables. <laughs> and I know that's like, uh, you're not supposed to say that, but that was the truth. That was my truth back in the day. Hated vegetables, most of them, right? But I buy them. Oh, look at all my salad stuff. When I'm going through the, the, uh, the cashier, look at me, lettuce, kale, and then it would it'd go bad, all right? That's just honestly, right? It was terrible. I am a vegetable eater now, a proud one of primarily roasted vegetables because I found a way to cook them that is irresistible to me and I'm in love. But the point of practicing zero food waste, this can go many ways. First of all, shopping your pantry before you go grocery shopping. Uh, there's a lot of, I've been to people's houses that have a lot of pantry food, a lot. Like I feel like if it hit the fan, like they could live for a very long time. And I know a lot of people on my channel here, they love talking about prepping and I'm not going to get into the prep talk, but that that's another conversation for another day. But what do you guys got going on in your pantries? How's your fridge? Do you have a lot of stuff? Do you have a lot of stuff in your fridge that you're not using? Do you have a lot of stuff in your freezer that you could address first before buying more? What about your pantry? What about your canned goods? What about your pasta? Like, is there beans? Is there some stuff that you could use up a little bit more? Have a weekly clean out the fridge day. Put all the leftovers out on the table and let everyone take what they want. I love that. The let... Food is expensive and priceless. It always has been, but it's worse right now, like we know. Don't waste it. I love that idea from Hope. Hope, you did a video not too long ago. I think it was about like essentials. 
that you should always have. And I swear, unless I'm delusional, didn't it get over a million views? Oh my gosh. That's awesome. Um, um, let me see. I have about a month in a freezer, two months pantry, slowly building, rotating things. Nice. Hi, Esther. I do better with frozen than I do too. I love frozen vegetables. Are you guys into frozen vegetables? Last longer and doesn't get wasted. Can't handle canned veggies. Have cans in case, but don't prefer it. I hear that. I hear that loud and clear. Amy says, make sure that oldest food used first. Yeah. Ooh. Fully stocked could live for months on pantry products. Yes, Cape Cotter. You got this. Oh, hi, guys. Andy K says, my family will eat the same thing two days in a row. Leftovers are pretty much non-existent anyway, since I have three boys, <laughs> right? They're like... What does that mean? Leftovers, going for it. Um, I'm going to keep going, but there might be stuff that we come back and we touch base on, and that'll be cool. Number 14, sell everything you're not using. Do you have, I feel like, I'm trying to think if I have one right now, like an iPhone that you moved on, you upgraded, and you've got an iPhone sitting around. Do you have kids stuff? If you have children that you can sell the stuff, there's a lot of stuff. I remember selling stuff when Caden got older and outgrew stuff. Um, there's so much. And by the way, my, my question is, for those of you, some of you are so good at selling your stuff. What do you use? I know some of you use Facebook Marketplace. Some of you use like uh, certain apps. Can you let me know in the comments what, where do you sell the stuff? Because you know there's stuff somewhere that you can sell. Moonchild Susanna. Hi, Kate. I love your tips. I hate going out so I don't spend money on entertainment. I'm very happy with very little. Well, Susanna, that's awesome because then you're not like always in a constant state of want. You are content and that is priceless. Karen says she sells on eBay. My dad has sold some stuff on eBay. Um, eBay is a good one, right? I mean, I know I, I've never, I don't even think I've ever bought anything on eBay. Isn't that weird? Who hasn't bought something on eBay? I've also never used Uber myself. Like I've never punched it in. I've been in an Uber with someone else, but is that weird? Mm. Hello, Marsha. First live. Welcome. Oh, okay. So Poshmark or Mercari. East Link will buy back your old phone if it's in good condition. Uh, marketplace, hands down. I was just looking to see the. Oh, Offer Up is another one. Thanks for all these suggestions, you guys. eBay has always for, worked for Lisa. Hey, Lisa. Marsha, thank you. I'm so glad you're here. You never eBayed or Ubered either? <laughs> We're not, it's just us. Um, I've had, hi Cheryl. I've had success buying a desk and a nice dresser from Facebook Marketplace, but don't have anything to sell, unfortunately. Yeah, so sometimes we don't, but if you have stuff that you could make some money off of, yes, give it a whirl. Okay, number 15 is use digital coupons. Now, there was a time back in the day that I was like, why isn't everyone using regular coupons? Like when I, who's gone through this phase where you stumbled upon coupons and you realized 
they can work, but then you got to a point where you're like, this is too much work. How much am I really saving? I'm out. And that's kind of what happened to me. Though I do see the value in them, I wasn't going to spend the time doing it. However, if you're a Mainer, Kathy, if you're still in here, or any of my Mainers, Mary, um, I shop at Hannaford sometimes, and Hannaford has digital coupons, and I think those are amazing. Does anybody shop at Hannaford? I know you're not. Or... Or does, like, if you're in Florida, does Publix do digital coupons? Oh, Candy. Hi, Candy. She's like, yard sale. We could do a yard sale, too. Totally. The digital coupons at Hannaford are awesome. Sometimes it'll be like, um, take $10 off a $100 purchase. Now, back in the day when I used to grocery shop, sometimes I would spend $75 a week. That was That was me for a long time but I was eating too much processed junk food. I was not buying meat and um, I just wasn't really managing my nutrition very well back then. And now it's a lot more. All right, moving on. This is also a favorite of mine because I feel like it's overrated. And I know it's like, you probably think, oh, it's common sense, but... How many of us have half empty cleaning bottles, half a bottle of Windex, half a bottle of Mrs. Myers? Uh, there's a video, I, one of my first videos, I have like 20 containers, like half used. It was terrible. Lotions, bath and body lotions, shower gels, like shampoo. You know you have stuff in your bathroom that you have not used up every drop. Confess in the comments right now. <laughs> Confess. Oh, you guys are saying, oh, wow. Oh, okay. So a lot of Dollar General has digital coupons. Claire cuts the toothpaste tube to get the rest from the bottom. Use up every drop, you guys. I feel like there's a lot, like in my bathroom right now, I, I'm better at it, but, you know, oh, Kroger, there's a lot of, like, main, like, Aldi, right, is a popular place, and we don't have that here, I, or not near me. So use up every drop. Number 17, reduce paper towel use. I do remember the day that this hit me. I had bought big thing of paper towels, big thing of toilet paper, big thing of tissues. And I'm like, all of this is going in the trash or in the toilet. Like all this money that I just spent on this is going down the drain one way or another. And it just hit me like, I don't need to use all this. I used to wash my hands and dry it with a paper towel. I don't need to do that. That's a waste of paper towel. Use a use a use a uh, a kitchen rag or a, you know kitchen towel, which you know you probably have more than you need, right? I mean, who has endless kitchen towels and then also like microfiber cloths? I'm not paper towel less. Let me be clear. Hello, Irma. Welcome. Guys, if you're new and you are enjoying this discussion, please hit subscribe so you can join us and be part of the family. I am, I'm so glad you're here. Hey, Lori B from Florida. You guys know I used to live in Florida. Love it. Um, but paper towel, I think that's something that you could do, right? Do you guys overuse your paper towels? I did. But there are some things I refuse. And I know people are like, here are some other options when I first shared this, but I'm not picking up cat puke with anything but a paper towel. Sorry. That's where I draw the line. I know there's other options. I'm not taking them. That's when you take what you can and you throw away the rest, right? Number 18, eat home most of the time. I have gone out to dinner a couple times because this is my going out to dinner season, summer, because everything's open. My mainers... Tell me, Mainers, 
who love, love, loves the summer going out right now? Like, it's perfect. Marsha Blair, thank you so much for the super chat. That is, I, I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for that, Marsha. Um, yeah, you hear me? You hear me about the cat puke? I'm not doing it. Eating at home. Now, if my mom is still watching, my mom was in here earlier. Or if you know me, if you, if you know me, like we've spent time together or you know me from YouTube, I used to not cook almost ever. Now I'm into it, you guys. I love cooking at home. I almost prefer it in many situations because I have grown into the art of roasted vegetables and like ground turkey, oh, sour cream, cheese. Hello. So good. Eating at home will save you a lot of money. Even though groceries are expensive, I'm spitting. Even though groceries are expensive, eating at a restaurant is more expensive, right? <gasps> Kayla, watching you from Maine right now. Great tips as always. Thank you so much. Kayla, one of my mainas. All right, so we all know this. I'm going to keep going. Ooh. Now, a lot of people on the channel have been introduced to minimalism either through me or through other places. Um, one of my favorite minimalists, Joshua Becker, defines minimalism as the intentional promotion of the things we most value by removing everything that distracts us from it. I think that is a beautiful definition. I think stereotypically when you hear the word minimalism, you might be thinking like, oh, you don't own anything. You don't buy anything. No, but it's just like frugal living is, you guys. Frugal living is using things sparingly and not wasteful when you can so that you can spend abundantly and unapologetically on the things that matter to you. And minimalism, I think, is along the similar lines where you're promoting the things that you value. Like maybe, maybe you do have less in your home, but it's everything that you love. Maybe you have um, fewer choices to make. A lot of people that explore minimalism uh, might have like a capsule wardrobe where they enjoy less clothing with more things that match so they don't have to stand there and go uh, and try on all these things. And does this fit? And does this match? There, that's a whole other topic. But um, minimalism, Sandra. Sandra is a minimalist. Um, Karen, I love that definition also. When I heard him say it, I'm like, that is, that's great. Um, I have a whole minimalism playlist. If that just kind of intrigued you and you're not familiar with it, check on that when you leave, okay? Number 20, look at your bank statement every single day. And that might sound obsessive to some. Some of you might be like, no, but I have a morning ritual. When I get my coffee in the morning, I sit with my coffee. I look at my bank statements. That way I can look, are there any fraudulent charges? Are there any subscriptions that I'm getting charged for that I forgot about? Um, when I see it, in front of me. I'm like, oh, oh, that's where I went to eat. Oh, look, I went out to eat this many times this month. Like maybe I need to reel that in or online shopping. Did you get a little nuts? By looking at your statements and being accountable, it really can help. And I just take five, maybe 10 minutes in the morning while I'm drinking my coffee. It's pretty much five minutes now during the weekdays before I go to work. It's part of my ritual. And then you've got your finger on it and it's no, there's no surprises. Hey, Desiree, looking at my bank statement every day has really helped me. Yes. Started doing this based on your recommendation. How's it going? I feel like it's just helpful and it doesn't get out of control. You know, you just got your, you got, you got it. All right. Use the library. Number 21. Use the library. Oh my gosh, it's free. If you love reading, 
I could totally fall into the trap of just putting things in my Amazon cart, save for later, which is another whole video, by the way, because I, I have found lots of ways to save with Amazon. But if you get it for free and give it back and not clutter up your house, who uses the library in here? Does anybody use the library? Hello, Marianne. Welcome. Yeah, the library, I think, is fantastic. By the way, if you read psychological thrillers, which is like my favorite genre, The Silent Patient, so good. So good. Number 22, practice frugal exercise. Now, if you have a gym membership and you love it, and you use it every day or every week, and it's like your thing, then don't listen to me on this one. Keep it up. If that's your thing and you love it and you're using it, get healthy. Get healthy. Have fun. But if you're a person who has a gym membership, but you don't really use it, consider getting rid of it. Or it's nice out right now. Again, my mainers. You want to go for walks. You want to go for a jog. I don't want to run unless someone's chasing me, but I love going for walks. Like I love going for walks. So that's, you know, that's something that you could do. There's a lot. When I was working out with my friend Dina, we worked out together and I was paying her because she was a trainer, but I was not, we weren't using any special equipment. And if you need help, look, Doris. She's got the, she's got the move. She's got the tips. Um, you can just work out from home using your body weight. So say you're into like, you want to be like push-ups, crunches, squats, jumping jacks, all that stuff. You don't need any equipment, you know, or you could get like dumbbells if you wanted to for, for the, for the weights, but you don't, you don't have to have an expensive gym membership unless it really works for you. So number 23, batch errands. Oh yeah. This is one of my favorite ones with gas right now. I, instead of going out three times in a week, one time to go to the grocery store, one time to go to the bank, one time to go to the post office. I hit it up all at the same time. And I kind of plan it the way that what's closest and if I'm going grocery shopping, I'm probably going to the bank. I'm probably going to the post office and I'm probably, you know, getting gas. Like everything's all at the same time. Like I don't, I don't do separate trips. We can't afford to right now. <laughs> That's always been a tip that I did, but I feel like now it's even more important. You know what I mean? Batch errands. Wash your clothes less. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> Hear me out. I think a lot of the times as routine, we just wear something and then we just throw it in the wash because we wore it. But is it dirty? Is it actually dirty? Did you get a stain on it? Does it even smell? Like, is it just like, or is it just habit? If you don't always throw your stuff, say like you wore a, a sweater for an hour because you just like ran out for an errand, don't throw it in the wash. Put it Put it away. Save yourself from the extra load of laundry. You know what I'm saying? Ooh. Oh, hello, Deborah, watching from New Hampshire. All of our New England friends. I love it. Number 25, eat less meat. This used to be no problem for me. I almost used to never buy meat, except like back when Caden was younger, maybe like chicken nuggets or something like that. But I didn't buy ground beef. I didn't buy ground turkey. I didn't buy chicken breast. I didn't buy steak. You're like, Kate, what were you eating? Crap, to be honest. So, but you don't have to have meat every meal, especially now that I'm obsessed with vegetables. Meat is expensive. We know this. So either you could buy less or you could make a meal where meat is kind of on the side. You know what I mean? Meat on the side or, you know, where it's not the main event 
where it can be spread out, you know, like tacos or whatever, you know, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of options with that where it doesn't have to be a steak and some potatoes, a little salad, like try to make the other parts, the, the big thing. Hi, Alita. She, um, hang dries her clothes too. Yes. That's definitely an option. Yes, vegan here. I love to cook more than ever. That's awesome, Lisa. Oh, hey, Brian. Hello, Ellie. Um, Susan says, grew up on meat as dad was a butcher. Don't eat much now. I'd rather have fish. Ooh, I love fish too. I love it all. I want it all. I only eat meat at restaurants for a treat. Yeah. Oh, like Friday night, I went out with my best friend for dinner and we had this amazing meal and it was filet mignon. Oh, it was so good. But I wouldn't cook that at home. Maybe now I would, but not right now. It's more that. Well, hello. Who recognizes this special guest? Probably the official youngest member of the K-Squad. Hello, hun. My favorite boy. Okay, so now we're moving on to number 26. Utilize free entertainment. Now that people can get out a little bit more, a little bit more, free concerts, free events, there's stuff. Or just even going to the park that's free. If you have kids, um, there's endless free entertainment that you can participate in. It doesn't always have to have a bill with it. You know what I mean? It doesn't have to always be dinner. It doesn't always have to be a movie and all the snacks at the movie theater. Um, yeah. You know, so there, I mean, fr free entertainment, look for it, especially in the summer. I don't know where you, you know, some of you guys are in the world. It's, it's different, but like, you want to make sure you try some free stuff, like, try, you know, it, or I, I even love just having friends over and doing like a, like a pot, like everybody bring a dish or everybody bring something. And then it's not that expensive. And I, I love being at people's house, you know, Kaden, they're saying, Hey, doesn't. Doesn't take much to make me happy. Love it. Some of you are so content and I just love that. You're just like, I'm good. All right. So this is where we're going to get into dicey territory. I'm just going to warn you. All right. Go with one car if you have more than one car. Now, this is not for everyone and I know it. But I'm just going to throw it out there. Just, just going to throw it out there. Um, if you are in a position where one car is just sitting there and you're making a payment on it, but you're not even using it. Do you need it? Has anyone ever done that? Has anyone ever sized down with car wise and you just went with one? Let me know. Um, also, if you can't operate with one car, think about, uh, you could think about refinancing your current auto loan for like a lower rate to save um, town and country can help with that. If you guys are town and country members, just you, there's options, but, um, yes, uh, Sloan says we do it since we're remote now. So you don't need two cars. Hawk strong said it's not easy being a one car family, but we make it work. It's one of those things where like, you could try, you could try it. Being a one car family is worth the savings. So that's an option, guys. Just know if you've got more than one car and you can drop one person off at work or they're not using it, just it's just something to put out there, put it out in the atmosphere just in case. All right. Downsize your home. Oh, I can't. <laughs> When I originally put these together, originally, this was a, a while ago, because these are kind of like my frugal foundations, if you will. Downsizing your home, like even finding a home right now, I, how is it where you guys are? There's nowhere to live here. Like, don't consider coming to Maine. There's nowhere to go. 
Mainers, do you agree? So, um, hi, Bonnie. Um, I had some notes that if, if selling isn't in the cards right now, you could consider refinancing your mortgage, um, for a home equity loan paid off sooner. Um, you could save it on interest. And again, that's another thing town and country could help you with if interested. But sometimes we buy houses. Like when I got approved for my loan, I knew there was no way I was actually going to use that much because I didn't want to be house poor. So I feel like, yeah, like there's a lot of people that have houses in their home that they don't even use. So consider, could you downsize? Do you need that much space? Yeah. Right, Kathy? They're out of sight. <laughs> Sandra. Sandra, I feel like Sandra is like my, she's just like, I feel like you're on my shoulder and she's just like looking out for when I say things and she's like, I feel like you need to do that. Frugal Foundations. I see a video series. I love it. We just closed yesterday. Finding was easy. It was just very hectic with no time to think and offer how to make. Yes. Andy, yes. Oh my gosh. When I bought this house, you couldn't think. Sometimes we'd make an appointment to see the house and it was sold before we even got to go see it. It was unreal. It, again, just a thought, a possibility. Now, here's another hardcore one. If you have never heard of Dave Ramsey, he calls it going scorched earth, which means, now this is if, now this is, listen, I'm more of a moderate frugal person, meaning like, con I always say like contemporary frugal, like I'm realistic. There's a lot of like frugal tips from the Great Depression, which are fantastic, by the way, because some things never change, but I'm not extremely frugal. Like what I do when I'm telling you, these are things I actually do. Some things I go a little crazy on, but some things I'm just completely average or something. Sometimes I might be like, that's not even frugal. I'm, I'm just, I just share what I do. Go scorched earth is an option if you are in trouble. Scorched earth means you do go with the one car. You do downsize the home or you move, you rent, whatever you have to do. You don't go out to eat. You don't buy new clothes. You put the hammer down and you do not pass go. You do not collect $200. You are in like paying off debt mode and you are not budging. That's not for everyone, but it's an option. Going scorched earth, I've heard some amazing stories of people just really buckling down when they have to and making it happen, you know? So that's an extreme one, especially if you're like really wanting to pay off debt, like bad, like the fire has been lit under your butt, which by the way, if you've never heard Dave Ramsey's total money makeover, that was my initial fire under my bottom. And it was amazing. It was awesome. Again, you take take what works for you, let go of the rest. Oh, this one is not going to be fun for some of us. <laughs> so first of all, I don't have this option. I'm not coupled up. So it's me. Do I live off of one income? I have to. <laughs> so yes. So but think about this. Say you have a partner, spouse, someone you live with, someone you're coupled up with that you spend money together with. And imagine you decided you were only going to live off one person's income. You were going to fit your life into one person's income. And then you were going to use the rest to save, invest, and pay off debt. I know people that have done it. 
Has anyone in here ever done that? Where you just live off of one. I remember one of my videos I did. Um, this is obviously on a different scale, but I think it was Jay Leno. Sandra, I'm sure you watched <laughs> that video where Jay Leno, he never touched. Okay, like he had his um, stand-up comedy and he had his TV show. And he would only spend one of them. The other he would save and invest and he pretended it didn't even come in. Isn't that amazing? Susan says, lived off of one income when we bought our previous home. So when I became what about 48, I was okay. Oh, Susan, first of all, I'm sorry about that. But so you guys did work together to do that. Karen says, that was my grandma's advice. It worked for her. Cheryl said, that sounds so awesome. Awesome. Wish we could do that. Again, those last few are not for everyone. And that's okay. Like, of everything that we're talking about, think about this. Everything that we just talked about in the last hour, can you guys let me know in the comments? Just take a second and let me know what's the one of the 30 that when you heard it, you're like, I want to try that. Let me know in the comments, what's one that maybe you weren't practicing as much that you want to practice more. I'm very interested in, in finding out. Just so you know, on this channel, if you haven't hit subscribe, please hit subscribe. We have new videos every single Friday, which we affectionately call frugal Friday. Traditionally. 6.30 a.m. in the morning. I am live on the channel with the K-Squad. Not everybody's up that early. Not everybody is in our country. So some people are sleeping. Some people are just getting up and going to work. Uh, it's usually when I'm getting up and going to work. <laughs> so I'm live in the chat and we, we touch base on these things. And it's so fun. Ooh, Deborah, I like that. Someone said to me, if you don't like bills, don't have them. It changed my life. The less debt you have, right? If you don't have a car payment, you don't have a mortgage payment. You guys know that's my only debt. For those of you that are new here, that's my only debt is my house, pay, my, my mortgage. I don't have any credit card debt. Currently, I don't have any student loan debt, no personal debt, just the house. And the idea of paying that off fuels me, fuels me. The drink water one resonated with you? Yes, Susan. Hello, Linda. S Sarah, hello. On a smaller scale, I send half my check to savings, so only half goes into our spending with my husband's income. I flip and love that. First of all, I flip and love Sarah, but second of all, that is a great, that's a great idea. And like we're saying with all this stuff, guys, adjust it to what works for you. Sai says, we love Frugal Friday. Oh, and we love Sai that you're here. Thanks, Sai. Terry says, build emergency fund. That's the one that's really, yes. Oh, several of you are saying the emergency fund. You're welcome, Laura. I have two incomes, social security and pension. Perhaps I should try to use one for expenses and one for savings. That would be a challenge. Heck yeah. Kathy, that's exciting. Hey, Heart Flight. Glad to see you at the end. Oh, yes. You can go ahead and watch through after. The playback will be there for you. Just me from California. Hello, Teresa. Nice, Susan. Does anybody off the top, obviously we're running out of time, but you guys know I could talk to you all night long. Is there anything off the top of your head that you're just thinking? Now, by the way, in the description, my email's in there, so you could always email me a question. Let me just touch base with you really quickly before we head out of here, uh, what the Kate method is. The Kate method is 
something that I use to reach my financial goals and it also helps me in making decisions in the rest of my life. So say you've got a problem, right? The first thing I do is I keep focus. What's the problem? Like say it's a financial thing, right? Say I want to save, um, it's totally off the top of my head, $500 for a vacation and it's happening in five months. You know what I mean? So um, I know what I need. What do I do next? I adjust. So I'm going to like think, okay, what do I have to adjust in my budget? If I've got $500 I need to save, I've got five months. I got to come up with $100 per month. You can break it down that way. And I'm going to adjust my budget. Okay, I don't need to go out to eat this month. I'm saving for my vacation. I'm going to move this. Um, I don't need to, this subscription, I'm done with that. I adjust that, you know, and you adjust your budget to what you need it to do. Track. This is crucial. you got to track the spending because if you set the budget up and you don't track what you actually spend, you, you missed a part, an, a crucial part of the process. So tracking is key. Same thing with cat. Uh, I'm not even going to get that. Anyway, tracking. And lastly, eliminate everything that's unimportant. That's another like life thing, I think. Like eliminate the stuff eliminate the social media you don't want to follow anymore that makes you feel bad eliminate the friends that are fair weather friends and you don't really enjoy being with anymore gently of course eliminate the stuff in your house that no longer has a purpose and no longer brings you value oh mr hannum's giving a cry guys if you've been enjoying this please type frugal in the comments and I hope this is like the beginning of a conversation that might be helpful for you going forward. Doris, you just quoted Vanilla Ice and I almost just spit out my drink. Thank you. <laughs> if there was a problem, yes. Okay. Frugal, frugal, wonderful. You guys, I could talk all night. Oh my gosh. Okay, I, I probably should wrap it up. Linda, are you still there? Can you hear me? Can you wave? I can see you. You're still there. Oh, wonderful. Okay. Um. I just want to sincerely thank Town & Country for working with me on this to bring this content to you. As we've talked about the value in credit unions, like they're just, they're salt of the earth awesome, this this group that I work with. So I'm, I'm thrilled to be here with you guys. Um, Linda, John, Megan, they're just, they're amazing. Um, if you're not subscribed, like I said, hit subscribe. We come here every week. This is a very collaborative, very supportive and encouraging environment. And this is where we come to talk about this stuff. Not every single family member is going to want to talk about this. Not every friend of yours wants to talk about frugal living, budgeting and saving money tips. But right here we do. And we do every single week and we love it. So if that's your jam or it's something that you're interested in, join our family and come visit and have this conversation with us each week. I'm also on Instagram. I'm also on Facebook. I'm also on TikTok. But this is my main hub. And if this is something you're interested in, come join us each week. Each week we have a new topic. And uh, this coming week, we're actually talking about... I think this is kind of funny because we were talking about budgeting, but um, I'm talking about five reasons you're struggling to start a budget. And I hope that resonates with you and is helpful. And like I said, if you haven't started a budget, look in the description of this video and you will have a whole video on how to start one. Linda, is it cool if I bring you back on to say goodbye? That would be great. That would be great. I thought I was. So I'm talking and nobody's here. And so I'm glad you had a Oh, sorry. Here she is. This is Linda again. Hi, Linda. Hi. 
Well, that was great, Kate. Thanks so much. And uh, you know, for those of you that are followers of Town of Country's Facebook or Instagram, Kate does a special uh, Frugal Friday recap uh, or spot for us too. So you can get lots of tips, lots of different ways. And so we really appreciate you taking the time tonight to share all these ideas. And um, you know, right now, the more ways we can come up with to, you know, save some money and still have some fun. I mean, it's, it's what we need. And so thanks. Thanks so much. And thanks for everybody that joined us tonight. Appreciate thank it. Thank you so much, Linda and everyone at town and country. And thank you everyone for coming. Thank you K squad for being here. And thank you for all the town and country members that came over. I hope that you stick around we can do this every week. For sure. All right. Bye thanks. everyone. Have a wonderful night. Bye-bye.